Let's talk about trading. Um, did back testing allow you to gain more confidence in your trading? Uh, that's a great question. Someone asked me on Twitter. Um, yes, it gave me back testing gives you it's like watching film. It gives you the ability to know what can work in a real market. The thing that does give you ultimate confidence is forward testing. There's nothing like actually putting the trade on here in order pending order filled and now you're seeing the position go against you or in your favor on a future side like when you hear target field that's when you know so back testing is like watching film and i think most people don't go back far far enough to get a true sample size i think you need to look back at maybe six years worth of data to see if your targets work so if you're trading futures you need to see if four tick target works 20 tick target for every instrument that you trade on the option side, I think you need to see if you're going for percentage-based targets, do they work in every cycle? A compressed cycle, a lot of volume, a lot of volatility, squeezes, limits up, and limits down. You have to see that. But the only thing that's going to give you real confidence in your trading is forward testing. Like, you can't be on simulation mode all of your life and expect to have some big wins. Um, it hits different when you actually, like, put your money in. And even for a lot of you who trade, with prop firm money, it's different than when you put all your capital on the line. Because in real life, you can't hit a reset button if you lose a hundred grand on a bad option call. Or like the guy on Netflix who lost eleven million. Fortunately, he made it up with Dogecoin. Shout out to the dog. Listen, <laughs> but you trade a lot better if you're using your own capital because you're going to be a lot more mindful of the trades that you take. So, closing out this year, going into 2024, if you've not taken a live trade yet set aside two thousand dollars to do so so you can feel all of the emotions write your game plan out but the only way you're truly going to get confident is by shooting your shot in the market and forward testing your strategy and not deviating yeah. from i mean i keep saying it but stop devi deviating from your plan yeah and inside that options trading I, I would tell people this is like one of those things that I, I hadn't seen people doing but you should check the the bid history before you buy a contract that's a right? great like, Say it again. Like, yes. Yeah, because I think people get the stock price and the bid price and they think they're the same thing and they're completely not, right? So you can see right. how a stock moves over its history, right? We can see the one month, we can see six months, year to date, one year, two years out. And that's great to know, but you should also know what the how that bid has moved with the stock price, right? And so if the stock moves up, how far has the bid moved? Has it grown to a, a percentage that makes sense to you, right? Like, I, we always talk about that. Like, what's the percentage that I need to see it decline before I, I realize that, all right, it's hit a level that I'm willing to now invest. And so finding out what the bid history is, is as important, if not more important, if you're trading options, right? You need to see where it was six weeks ago. You need to see where it was a year ago. Sometimes if you're doing a leap, how, how far back two years ago, you're, you want to see where that is trending so you know, all right, this is a spot. It pulled back 20%. It pulled back 30%. I like to do 50%, right? If it pulls back 50%, it's a, a great, great company. Great. Yep. I'm looking at it like, okay, there, there's some room for growth. And we kind of showed that on the screen a few times, but I think people are getting confused. They're like, well, the stock price moved up. With the bid. If you're in options, you're trading options, you need to look at the bid, right? You need to know what that ask is. And like you said, it's good to watch it, but when you see order filled, it's a different that's different. Thing. That's when a game really starts. Right. And, you, and that becomes, you know, yeah, I was going to say, that becomes one of those things that, all right, am I going to fill this at a limit price or a market price? These yep. things are all these little intricacies that you need to know before you get into the space. Because, again, he had, he had 10 million go down to six, but he still had other investments, right? Most of us don't have a thousand dollars that can go down to 400. So we got to be a little bit more refined with our skill set when we're making these decisions. Every tool you, you can add to the tool belt is important. The great lesson that I think I, I forgot to mention, I don't like how he dispersed the capital, but I've been saying forever, every business on earth needs to learn how to trade so no one can dictate your future endeavors. Like there's a lot of talk, and I was talking yesterday about like where does the podcast and space go after 2024 and 2025. A lot of y'all living zombies right now but i think for those of you that are moving forward if you don't know how to trade and invest inside of that business you're going to be in a lot of trouble so i think if he would have maybe had a, a apple or microsoft call dan did the doge and bitcoin 
he probably could have tripled that money. Just and what a hell up. of a story that would have been. And but you know, I'm glad he messed up because it makes the opportunity for us. We need to get on the yeah. front line with Netflix ASAP. <laughs> four, four, four Rolls Royce is too many. So, um, what's <laughs> what's on your list? The best stocks 2024. Um, I was looking. Um, I know we talked about it before. Troy's mentioned this one a lot. A lot. TSM, I like. Um, I like AMAT. I love AMD. AMD, for the next three or four years, has no chance to catch up to NVIDIA. But I've loved AMD for a long time. Even some people on the show last week were saying, like, oh, do you not love AMD anymore? I love them both. Um, it's like having a Rolls Royce and Bentley. Like, you swap them out. Still a good car to drive. You're good. But I think um, AMD, AMAT, and Taiwan Semiconductor, once the geopolitical threat goes away, I'm all in. For those of you who've been buying anyway, I commend you can continue to buy. But I think this notion of like only that the Magnificent 7 that's producing gains has been a little bit overstated. And I think we're seeing some of these start to make a nice run and will run well into 2024, 2025, like you have to invest for the long term. Um uh another ticker snps i will put on the watch list as well i don't love it at the price that it's at now but cadence design i do like i have that on the watch list as well so there's a, a lot of other companies that are doing incredibly well i know we lean a lot on the big seven and i lean a lot on two tech two index but there are some other companies that are setting up to have a nice run in 2024 25 and 26 and if you guys are investing for the long term you shouldn't worry about any three month or one month moves at all. Yeah, and, and we still love Nvidia. We still love Nvidia. I know people were watching Nvidia. the earnings. They were watching earnings last week, and we we spoke about it. Uh, and it it beat pretty much on every line. But the one thing that was concerning is that future guidance when they, mm -hmm. you know, when we talked about uh, the geopolitical game between America and China when it comes to the semiconductor space. What impact will it have? They said it, it would have a, a significant impact in the fourth quarter. Um, but what they did say, in addition to that, which kind of had to stop moving back and forth after the earnings, was the fact that they're going to try to make it up in different regions. And so I'd be interested to see which regions. Like, that would be the thing to research now. What NVIDIA region is, is NVIDIA moving into? And once you see NVIDIA there, I'm sure AMD is already there or going there as well. And so if they lose China, which is not lose China, but obviously the ban it has hurt some of the sales uh, for the H1, Hundred, where is the next space? Is it India, right? Is it is it South? America? We got to figure out where that's going, um, yeah. so they can offset some of this loss with the, with this ban. And I mean, who knows? Maybe in a, in, a, in a year, six months, that ban's lifted, and, and you know, this, this goes back to something that could not that it's going down. I mean, we, we, it's had an incredible year, but six hundred yeah. could could be in the cards for, for Nvidia if that ban get, gets lifted. Absolutely. And especially, like you said, if we pass things over China, because we were China and America needs each other. We can play fight. It's like the relatives you may not get along with at Thanksgiving, but like y'all still blood relatives. So you got to get along. U.S. and China has to find a way to coexist or it's going to be disaster for both. But I if NVIDIA breaks ground in India as India is kind of becoming the new China, we built up that middle class. Whew. Oh, baby. So, can we do a review video of our own videos? <laughs> <laughs> they think we should. <laughs> and, and go back to what we call, yeah, might, what, might as well. Might as well. We, we can be the antagonist of our own content. Which brings me to, what could we have done better in 2023 to have a better show and get people more gains? I know we call it NVIDIA, but any ideas that we can take into 2024? Which four-year anniversary coming up is crazy. This show lasted longer than a lot of my relationships. Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> These are just jokes written by DC Young Fly, Chico B. Shout out to anyone I've ever dated. You're amazing. I wasn't ready for you. Yada, yada.